Hello and welcome to Something to Think About with the British Bible School. I'm Mark Hill and I'm your thinker for today. A couple of people I know recently contracted Covid. One was my wife. Remember that? The thing that caused the country to shut down? The thing that meant crowds were not supposed to gather? We looked forward so much to getting back to normal, to meet together at the church buildings again. Or did we? Is everybody back? Are we enjoying Bible studies in buildings and homes face to face? There is, of course, a great benefit to be able to tune in from where we are and join a study anywhere in the world. I enjoy listening in and presenting lessons. I say presenting because that's what I think it is, rather than a study. Whereas we used to be able to discuss things freely face to face, discussion seems a little less free-flowing online. If you're part of a congregation, did everyone come back? Or are some still missing? Do we have each other in our homes like we used to? How are things now and, and what does the future hold, do you think? I've been reading a few reports based on surveys and some trends that are being suggested. And I'd like to suggest them to you to think about. The first one is that many attenders are no longer actually in the room. Attendance at a church building, we are told, has been in decline for decades and Covid is now blamed for speeding up the process even further. This of course is more or less true depending on your own experience. While some congregations go against the trend, the average church has seen their attendance come in at around 36% of pre-Covid levels, at least according to one source I read. I'm sure they vary. But we must ask, is it really about getting people into one particular building? Had we become stuck in a rut of thinking if it isn't in the building, it isn't church. The building is our comfort zone, but it's where the saved gather. We worship together, we get along well because we agree with each other. But had it become where we got to the point of not knowing how to communicate with anyone outside of that comfort zone? Did we think that if others do not come into that place at the designated time, they aren't really Christians? How well do we engage with others in sharing the gospel outside of the confines of the church building or worship service? Is our focus on getting them into that room? Or should we not be interested in bringing them into a relationship with Jesus, whether they're in the room or not? Dare I suggest that people who are engaging with the church from home or other places ought to count just as much as those who are attending in a church building, especially if they're participating in the mission of the church. You see, over the last few years, so many things have changed. You don't have to go to a workplace in many instances. You can work from home. Well, that's not actually new. When I was a child, my mum had work brought to the house from a hosiery business. When she completed the work, they collected it. You don't have to walk into a shop nowadays to buy things. You can use the internet. Well, you know, that's not new. The ladies at church, when I was uh, small, would hand around a Gus catalogue, make an order and have it delivered. The same happened courtesy of the Avon lady. Every Christmas, I got a soap on a rope. There's very little that is new, though I haven't seen any soap on a rope lately. But we have to admit, society's attitude has changed. People, thanks to the pandemic, have developed the idea that they do not need to go to a building to engage with others for whatever reason, let alone church. People can, and indeed should, be active in sharing the gospel and worshipping Christ outside of the building far more than they do inside. Because time-wise, less time is spent inside the building than outside of it. As much as I personally would prefer to be off of Zoom, perhaps it's worth embracing it. I wonder if the way for us to grow will be to take hold of online viewing and use it strategically to grow the church. If a worship service is broadcast from a church building and people are tuning in, what if there was an effort to invite others into your own home so they could watch it together? What if Bible studies could be online, but viewed by a group in a home together who could then discuss what had been on? This is not 
about providing a service for people who like to listen whilst in bed in the pyjamas with the camera off eating their breakfast. But people who are actively using a wonderful opportunity to reach family, neighbours and friends. Broadcasting a service taking place in a church building, groups could meet to watch together. They can sing with each other, pray along with prayers said online. They could take the bread and wine with each other rather than alone. This trend for online church isn't about people who are dropping out, but by tuning in with others, it's the seed of a group that could then grow. If we can come to terms with the fact that small gatherings and people watching from home should count as part of our fellowship, where there are elders by, uh, who are overseeing and helping those so that they're part of the bigger picture of the fellowship, then we can help them reach out to their community in the same way as we would people who are in our building. And as their group grows, they could start to be led from within and host their own service to suit that group. Do you purchase things online? The business that sold you that item considers you a customer just as much as if you personally went into their physical shop. Restaurant owners love to welcome people in, but now just as important to those who drive through or get takeaway or who have the food delivered by a person on a bicycle. All these ways fulfil their purpose of selling food. What about the church? Can we embrace this not as a way of doing lazy church, but to be more proactive locally and more mission-minded? People who aren't in the building could be considered part of the congregation, because this is all being organised together with those who will be in the building. Not only that, the church can grow where they are. If we adapt to this, not only is all not lost, but there's much to gain, because the church still exists, it is still present, but like Elvis, it has left the building and done what Jesus asked of us. It has gone out into the world. What a great opportunity. Another trend that leads from this is to grow by shifting our focus from gathering to connecting and sending. Historically, the church has gambled almost everything on gathering people in a building. Connecting people who are engaging from home with the church in the building and with one another must be a new skill that we develop. Does coming to Christ really mean coming to a church in a set location at a set hour? If you think so, how's it going? If it's working well, don't fix it. But otherwise, we need a new strategy. House groups, small groups or cell groups as they're called are an idea that's been around for a long time now, but it was almost as though each group is autonomous. There are possibly hundreds or thousands of people meeting in their homes to study and worship. Churches facilitate this, but do they host them in a centralised way? Our potential for Sunday morning can move in a new direction. Small groups by nature tend to be closed and intimate, but what if they gathered in homes outside the building on a Sunday morning or midweek and the focus was outward? Gathering people on a Sunday morning will be as important as ever because that's where people will be equipped to go out. It's where initially in the building groups will tune in to get their teaching etc. We just won't all be in a building owned by the church. Some will be in a home. What's your focus right now? Is it to try and fill a building or are we truly focused on fulfilling the Great Commission? The world has changed and if we want to uh, stick with what we're comfortable with and not change to meet society's needs, I believe souls will be lost. What lies beneath the desire to fill a building? Usually we quoted a verse from Hebrews chapter 10 about not neglecting to meet together. But does the following verse state that the meeting together must be for an hour on a Sunday morning in a particular location? I like to be in a building full of Christians. It's exciting. The singing is great. The prayers are heartfelt. The message is encouraging. But are we fulfilling the Great Commission? Are we more concerned with ticking off a list of do's and don'ts for a, a true worship service. I'm privileged to be part of a large congregation. It is so good. But it's hard to know everyone. 
and therefore difficult to connect in a meaningful way with each and every person. The size of our vision has got to be bigger than whatever place we currently meet in. In fact, if your vision shrinks to the size of a house that you can fill, you've missed the point. The house, the building, the community centre, the school room, they're just the start. We must be going beyond them. So what do you do with your building? You use it to meet and worship in. You have Bible classes. You also use it to equip people, not just gather them. We focus on equipping people to participate in the meeting in the building. Now we need to equip people, if they're already on Zoom or live at a distance, to use their home to reach others in their neighbourhood. Church buildings must not just be a place to meet for worship for an hour or so on a Sunday morning. They must be places where people assemble to worship, of course, but a place to be equipped to reach others during the week. Theoretically, we've always believed that, but have we executed a plan to actually go out and do it? At the moment, church online is being used to invite people into the building. In the future, we might use the building to send people out, even if it is to their home, but with a view to growing. We've usually measured a person's faithfulness by their attendance. What if, in some instances, a lack of attendance does not speak to unfaithfulness? Inflexibility by being bound to a certain place at a certain time might actually be the problem. We rushed during lockdown to get content online. That was a good and helpful thing to do. After a while, many didn't want to do that. However, because you personally feel screened out, as we might call it, doesn't mean others around us are. Just look at how many people are engaging with the likes of Instagram and TikTok. Apparently people aren't nearly as tired of screens as much as we might think. Many Christians now realise they can watch or listen to their favourite preachers or content creators whenever they want to for free. And so they do. We could try to equal or match the gifted and skilled communicators online, but most of us won't be able to compete. I mean, look at what I'm doing now. Where we can excel as a church is with connection and providing community. Nobody should be able to out-local or out-community the local church or even local Christians. Of all the neighbours in our neighbourhood, we should be the most neighbourly. Before people come to Christ, we must go to them. Make a connection. Bring them into our community, whether it is at the building or something planned in our home, alongside the building. The goal of digital content or Zoom must be forming a connection, not just something for folks to consume, not merely something to view, but a way to engage. Older people, like myself, prefer face-to-face -face worship as opposed to digital church. But others, you know, prefer a combination of in-person and digital gatherings. Still others, just digital meetings. What are we doing about that? Bible teaching and Christian living according to that teaching never changes. But these trends in society mean we must appeal to the world through these new ways of engagement. People work from home, shop from home and are entertained at home. With so much happening at home, could your congregation assist a group to meet at home with a view to growing out of that house? I only offer this as something to think about. And in the spirit of what I said about engaging with people uh, through online presentations, Perhaps you could let me know what you think about this.